So this is the first video of the Algebra and Functions series uh, part of the boot camp. And in this video, we're just going to go over the very basics of algebra. So how to combine terms, how to solve for x. Uh, really quick overview. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. If you're really weak in algebra, it's something you really want to focus on and do a lot of practice. Because even if it's not an overt algebra problem, it's still something that uh, may appear on other kinds of SAT problems uh, in different forms. So if it's something you're not comfortable with, you should definitely work on it. But in this video, we're just going to go over two things. First, how to combine expressions, essentially the basic operations of arithmetic and how they're used with algebraic expressions. And then we're going to just go over the basics of solving for x. So first things first, let's say we had 2x plus 3x. How would we combine that? Well, all we do is we add the coefficients here, 5x, like so. Well, why are we doing that? Because if you think about it this way, these two terms have x in common. So we can remove an x. We can undistribute that x. And we're left with 2 plus 3 over here. And that's just nothing but x times 5, which is just 5x. But we don't do this every time. We just do this shortcut. What about something like subtraction? Uh, 7x minus 9x. Well, that's just going to be negative 2x, and for the same reason above. So this would just be 7 times, or x times 7 minus 9, which is x times negative 2, which is just minus 2x. So being comfortable combining these terms, combining like terms, is so important not only for the SAT, but you know, for a lot of math. Um, what about something like 4x minus negative 2x plus x squared? Well. This we can just rewrite as, well, subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding a positive. So this would just be 4x plus 2x plus x squared. These two guys over here we can combine into 6x, but what about this x squared? Now, since this is an x squared term and this is an x term, we can't combine them by adding. So we've just got to leave it uh, to x squared. The only time you can combine x terms is when you've got you know, the same amount of x's next to each one. So say you had something like 6x minus 2. This is not equal to 4x. It's just going to be equal to 6x minus 2. So you can only combine things with x's. If you had something like 3x squared plus 2x squared, then sure, this is just 5x squared. But if you don't have the same uh, exponent next to them, you can't add them together. It's just you can't do it. And why is that? Well, again, think back here. The best we can do by undistributing here is just taking out 1x. That's all they share. So we take out an x, and we'll be left with 6 plus x. And note, we can't combine this term in here any further. And you know it's the same thing for something like this. We can't remove anything except for, well, 2. We could remove a 2 here, and we'd be left with 3x minus 1. But there's nothing we can do. We can't combine these any further. So we've just got to leave it as 6x minus 2. On this one, we just got to leave it as 6x plus x squared. What about multiplying, though? Multiplying, if we do x times x, that's just going to be x squared. And this is for the reason of the exponent rules. And I'll do a separate video on exponents and exponent rules. But for the most part, for, the, for just a quick reminder, the exponent of each one of these is 1. If there's no exponent written there, it's just defaulting to 1. And when we multiply two exponents with the same base, we just add the exponents. So this 1 plus 1 will give you 2. How about x 2x cubed times x squared? Well, that's just going to be 2. The 2 is just going to stay there. And then we have x to the 3 times x to the 2. That's just going to be x to the 5th. Dividing, instead of adding them, you subtract them. So if we had something like 4x squared divided by 2x, that's just 4x squared divided by 2x. So uh, this just becomes 2 over here. This just becomes 2x, because this x term cancels out one of these, leaving us with uh, 2x. Another way to see this, if you don't get the exponent rule, is to look at it this way. Let's say we had something like 4x squared times x cubed, or x squared times x squared. Now, if it were 4x squared plus x squared, this would just be 5x squared for the reasons des described here, the, the distributive property. Here it's a little bit different. You can look at it in the exponent rules, or you can look at it like this. 4 times x squared is just 4 times x times x, right? And then this is times x squared, which is itself x times x. And these four x's can combine together to form 4 times x to the 4, which is just 4x to the 4. So this is 4x to the 4. And down here, if we had something like you know 7x cubed, or x to the fifth, divided by 7x to the third, these 7's would cancel. This is the same thing as x times x times x times x times x over x times x times x. So each one of these x's will cancel, leaving us with x squared. So the answer here is just x squared. 
So being able to distinguish between when you can add terms and when you can uh, subtract terms versus how you multiply terms. Note, we don't have to have the same exponent here to multiply them. Whereas here, we need to have the same exponent to add them. You gotta be very familiar and comfortable with that. You can't really be a question about what you can do, what you should do in these situations. Really, it's something you should be able to see and recognize and do instantly. If you're spending any time thinking about what you need to do on these kind of problems, if you add or, you know, how do you multiply them, then you're really losing time. So get really comfortable with that. Finally, let's look at an equation just to review quickly how to actually solve for x in a very simple, in this case, a linear equation, but um, in just any kind of simple equation. All right, so here we are. The, the key with algebra is get the x by itself. And we do that by essentially unwinding the equation or reversing the steps to get x by itself. This is how we do it. Well, we've got a plus 7 here. We've got a minus 2 over here. I want to get this x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Now, the key, other key rule with algebra is do it to both sides. If you do something to one side, you've got to do it to the other. In addition, you can't do it something to a individual terms unless you're multiplying that term by 1. Like, if you multiply this by 2 over 2, that's fine. But you can't multiply this, say, by 3 without multiplying the 7 by 3. Anyway, so we subtract 7 from both sides. This cancels out, which is what we want. And over here, we're just left with negative 9. Now over here, we have 9x over 7. Now if this were minus 3, you're just going to add 3 to both sides, right? So you're just going to do the opposite operation to get rid of it. Finally, well, we've got to get this 9x by itself. We, get, we have a 9 times x and this x divided by 7. So let's get rid of this divided by 7 first. Just like here, we subtracted 7 to get rid of a plus. We've got to do the opposite operation to get rid of this divide. And the opposite operation is multiplying by 7. So let's multiply set both sides by 7. These will cancel, as we designed it to do so. 9x will then equal minus 63. And now we've got a, a 9 times an x. I want to get this rid of this multiplication, so I'm going to divide by 9, do the opposite operation. And I'm going to get x equals minus 7, and that's your answer. So that's a quick overview of algebra. Again, if this is something you struggle with, you really need to make sure you have this down, because it's something that's, if you, know, if you, if you don't get this, you're not going to get much else uh, in this chapter.